What's up guys? It's the first 15 and we're reviewing a new game called Everlasting Summer by Soviet Games. This is a game recommended to me by one of my subscribers who saw me play the last summer. The other uh, visual novel that I played that I had a lot of fun playing even though it was pretty whack. Uh, let's go through a couple of reviews to see what other people are saying. From fuanovel.net, fuanovel.net, they said it has gorgeous art, great sound design, and a fantastic atmosphere. Some of the cons, though, is that it had a weak plot structure as well as inconsistent art. Thumbsticks.com thought even worse of this game. They said it tries to be a deep coming of age story, so for all you prepubescent tweens out there, you guys might like this. Uh, it is a weak, stupid protagonist, and he cannot recommend this at all. So, with, with that type of uh, introduction, let's just jump right in. Here we go! Alright guys, we got 15 minutes on the timer, let's do this. New game. I was having that dream once again. That dream. Same thing every night. But it's all forgotten in the morning, as usual. Maybe it's for the best. Only a glimpse of memory will remain of gates half opened as if inviting me somewhere with two frozen stone pioneers standing close by, and also that strange girl who kept asking me, what is she gonna ask? What is she gonna say? Will you come with me? Oh, come but where and why? Where am I anyway? Of course it all happened in real life. I would certainly have been scared. Well. What else would one expect to feel? But this is just a dream. The same one I see every night. So he has a recurring dream, apparently. There must be some reason. You don't have to know where or why to realize, but something is really happening, something desperately seeking my attention since everything that surrounds me is real. Wow, he's really coming of age. As real as things in my own flat, I could open the gates, hear the hinges creak, brush the crumbling rust away from my hand, inhale the fresh, cool air, and shiver from the cold. I could, but to do that, I would need to pick myself up, take a step, move my hand. But this is a dream. I understand that. But what of it? What does my understanding change? But here, it's like on the other side of the cracked screen of an old TV, which struggles to fight against static noise and strives to show its audience everything without missing a single detail picture is getting blurry. I must be waking up soon. Maybe I should ask her something. The girl. What's her name? About the stars, for instance. Why the stars, though? I'd rather, I'd rather ask her to open the gates. Yes, the gates. That would, She would be so surprised. Or better, why the dot over the I is called a tittle, but the dot over the J is called a superscript dot. Is this a bad translation? Or are these guys really talking about tittles and superscript dots? Nice letters. As if they don't exist anymore. Still, what do letters, gates, and stars have to do with this place? But even if I'm having this dream every night, which will be forgotten soon anyway, I've got to look for answers here and now. And there, if you look carefully, you will see Magellanic clouds. As if I ended up in the southern hemisphere. In a dream, there are small things that catch your attention. An unnatural color of grass, impossible curves of straight lines, or your own distorted reflection. While in real danger, which could put an end to everything right here and now, seems trivial. It's natural since here, you cannot die. I know for sure I've done it hundreds of times. But if you cannot die, what is the point of living? I should ask the girl. She's local. She should know. Yes, exactly. I should have asked her about the owl, for example. I was wondering about this owl up here, guys. One strange bird it is, though it doesn't matter. So much text, so much reading. Will you come with me? And every time I have to answer, it's the only way. Otherwise, the dream will never end and I will never wake up. 
Um, let's see, here's our first choice. Yes, I'll come with you. No, I'll stay here. Dude, we've been talking about it. We've been yearning about it. Let's come with her. Every time it's so hard to decide the answer. Who is she? And why does my life so much depend on the answer? Or maybe it doesn't. It's just a dream after all. Just a dream. We're going down the rabbit hole, guys. You know how I got my honey lemon tea. Ooh, nice graphics. Nice keyboard. It's going in and out of blurriness. What is this? Is he like waking up in front of his computer or something? He's looking at 4chan! <laughs> He's looking up 4chan, man! Get out of here! Oh, such an advertisement. 2chan, are you? The computer screen stared at me as if it was alive. Up, oh, closing my nuns. Sometimes it really did seem to me that it was a conscious, it was conscious of itself. Had its own thoughts and wishes, ambitions, that it had feelings, could love and suffer. Huh. As if in our relationship, the screen wasn't an instrument. It to me was a lifeless piece of plastic, plastic and textolite. This is the um, itty bitty girl, right? You guys should definitely check this uh, this video out on YouTube with forget that famous rapper. It's pretty funny. If you could bake a cake or something like that, it's a pretty funny YouTube video. There's something some truth in that, probably because the computer provides ninety percent of my communication with the outside world: anonymous image boards, chats, ICQ jabber, and much more. 4chan. People on the other side of the internet cable simply do not exist. All of them are simply creations of its sick imagination. An error in the code or a kernel bug. This guy is highly technical. Source code and kernel bug? Dude. What's up? I think we're going to have to play more than 15 minutes of this, guys. I'm, we're we're going to go for a half hour because I want to see some actual gameplay, I guess, more than just this introductory text. If one looked at my existence from the outside, such things would be, seem crazy, and a psychologist would surely give a bunch of sophisticated diagnoses and maybe write me a doctor's referral to the loony bin. This guy is so introspective, guys. This guy is constantly thinking about the kind of the metaphysical I ideas of the universe. He's waking up slowly. A small apartment with no signs of repair or any semblance in order of in of order in it, and always seem always the same view out my window. Such are the conditions of my life. Well, of course it didn't start like this. I was born, went to school, and finished it like all the others. I was accepted to university, where I spent half a year trailing behind and struggling. I drifted through several jobs. Sometimes it's working out well. Sometimes. I I was even getting decent money for it, but I felt like it was not mine as if taken from another man's biography. Don't we all go through that, guys? Don't we all go through that moment where we realize that our life is the grind? That's why I changed my life and I'm playing video games full time. <laughs> he needs to do this too. I wasn't living life to the fullest. It was looping over and over in monotonous circles like the movie Groundhog Day. Yep, Bill Murray. Where's my Bill Murray shirt? I'm not wearing it. It's just I had no choice in how to spend my day, and even, and every day repeated itself. The same vicious spiral of despair. For the last few years, I sat in front of the screen all day. I sat in front of the screen all day. Sometimes there were menial jobs, sometimes my parents helped me. All in all, I was able to provide for myself. No wonder really, since my needs are quite minor. I hardly ever leave my home. So in brief, quite a typical life and quite a typical antisocial computer nerd at the time. Kind of the Donnie Darko on a minor scale without doomsday related visions. Maybe some highly respected author, I guess they mean author, will write a novel about me. Probably not. Your life is pretty boring. However, what's the point of fooling myself? I couldn't even come up with the simplest story. 
I tried to learn many other things as well, not gifted enough to draw, pro programming got bored, foreign languages takes too much time, it is a discipline. The only thing I loved doing was reading. But still, I could never call myself a scholar. Perhaps I was an ace at watching anime and a grandmaster of lame internet jokes. Yes, there are many of those guys out there. If I were to get paid for it, I'd probably be a happier person, and richer person too. But I doubt it would fill the hole inside of my soul. The hole in my soul. Today was another table day. I have to go to the university reunion. I don't want to go. What's the point? So sh It's so short. However, I was persuaded, persuaded by a friend. So, we're going to go to this university reunion! These are some really good graphics for a free game. I'll give them that. It's really well-drawn art. Look at this. Reminds me of my old, old 86 Chevy Celebrity, my first car ever. He's looking pretty, uh... Whoa! This is like a... Scanner Darkly type style. A frosty evening, waiting at the bus stop. Never like winter, though hot summer is not my season either. I just... It's just that I see no reason to go out at any, any time this year. Bus was running late today. So I have to spend my last few hundred ruples for the taxi. This is Mother Russia, after all. As usual, millions of thoughts through flew through my head, but there was not a useful useful one to seize on. Such a, such a thought that you could bring into existence, give shape, turn an idea, and put it into practice, it's doable. You just got to get to it. You got to start executing. Stop thinking inside your brain, bro, all the time. Maybe I could start my own business, but where would I get the money from? Internet jokes. Or maybe I could go back to working in office. No way! Should I try freelancing? But what skills do I have? This guy is thinking way too much. Suddenly, I remember my childhood, or rather my teen years when I was 15 and 17. Why exactly those years? No idea. I guess it's because back then, things were much simple. Yes, you didn't have responsibilities. Waking up in the morning, I knew exactly how my day was going to pass. Sounds like a job. And then at the beginning of next week, I'd take my studies up again. But then... There were no such worrying questions like why, who needs it, what will change if I do it, what will not change. A simple lifestyle, so casual for any normal person. The careless childhood age, it was also when I met my first love. Here we go, plot twist. Her appearance and personality have vanished from my memory. Only her name remains, like a brief line from a social network profile, along with the feelings which overwhelmed me when I was with her. You know... As much as I'm giving this this game grief, this game is actually making me think of my own life, right? It's making me think of my first love. Ooh, maybe I'll talk about that someday, guys. My first love back in middle school. Sadly, it didn't last long. Today, I can hardly imagine like that some, something like that happening. I'd probably like to meet a girl, but I don't know how to start a conversation. What on earth to discuss and how to attract her. Well, I haven't met many suitable girls for a long time. That's why I'm married, so I don't have to worry about other yojas and other girls. The sound of an engine brought me back to reality. The bus pulled over. There was something abnormal about it, I thought, but then again, it doesn't really matter. The 410 runs late. Look at him. A wide angle lens. Entering the bus. Wow. Street lights pass. After the cold light sparks inside of me, trying to ignite feelings long dead. Or maybe not ignite, just awaken them. Because those feelings, they have been living me in me for a long time. I'm just gonna sit back and appreciate this drawing, guys. This drawing is well done. It really envelops you in the story. Even this whole, like, magic girl going on. 
The driver's radio, radio was playing some very familiar tunes, but I wasn't listening to it. We are at 15 minutes! Picked it up at the exact same time. I'm gonna give you another 15 minutes. Let's see what happens. I watched the cars passing by through the fogged up window. But pe because people are always rushing somewhere, chasing something they need, stuck in their own little worlds. Why would they care about mine? Certainly the grind, man. They probably have their own serious problems. Or maybe they have much easier lives. You can't know for sure since all people are different. Or are they? Sometimes someone's actions can be easily predicted, but if you try to look inside his soul, you will only see impenetrable darkness. The bus was approaching downtown, and my thoughts were interrupted by the bright city lights. Hundreds of billboards, thousands of cars. I watched the light show, and somehow I got terribly sleepy. My eyes closed for a moment, then... Shabam! Graphic. It's a movement, finally. Nice. Oh, it's just kind of showing us the graphical representation of everything that we just went through. This is setting us up, guys, for some epic stories. I am assuming. Of course he's, oh! Hey, hey, here's our first, oh! Uh-oh. Uh, I don't know that name. Teenage Angst. Ayin Hana, I don't know. I have no idea, guys. I don't speak, what is this? CCCP, Yopokra. That would be my interpretation of it because I don't know Russian. Auruka? Auruka? Alright. Murk. Muki! I got that one. Muki. Muki's the one with the, the blue hair. Everlasting Summer is what I'm assuming that says. Unless it says you're a fool for playing this game. Day one. Bright daylight struck my eyes. At first I didn't pay attention as I wasn't fully awake. My legs carried me to the door. His name is Semyon. We'll just call him Semen. Ah, damn, it looks like I fell asleep and missed my stop. But there was no door. I look, I just realized I called him Semen. Semon. I looked around the bus and realized that it wasn't good, wasn't a good old worn out Liaz, and said the bus was an Icarus model, a new one. I froze in shock. How? What? Am I dead? Have I been kidnapped? I patted myself down feverishly, slapped myself painfully in the face. It's clear. Either I'm alive, or you can still feel pain when you're dead. But how could this happen? Maybe I slept for so long. And they put me on another bus? They wouldn't have carried you on another bus. I rushed outside. Greenery everywhere. Summer! How? It was just winter a moment ago. Ah, oh, my head is aching. I begin to remember. Can we get sucked into the past? long road running off into the distance. I think I was sleeping, but I don't remember all of it. And then a gap, some girl leaning over me, softly whispering something in my ear. Then a gap again. Then I woke up here. Who's that strange girl? Was it a dream? For some reason, thinking about her made me feel better and calmed me down a little bit. I felt warmth all over coming from the inside. Could it be her who brought me here? I need to find that girl. The best place to look is away from here. I rushed to the left, to the right, stopped, hesitated over where to go. Finally, I ran in the direction from which the bus had probably come. Yeah, an empty road, man. Physical exercise does refresh one's mind because I'm running aimlessly. Thoughts become clearer, and it gets easier to evaluate the surrounding realities. Not in my case, however, sitting on the roadside, wheezing and trying to ease my sore throat by gulping breath breaths of hot air. In any case, the run did its job. The fear withdrew for a little, little bit. Maybe I'm dreaming. 
Though recalling my self-harm on the bus, I immediately rejected that idea. I am neither dreaming nor dead. A narrow road ran through the field far into the distance. The exact same road of my dream. And it's not that it was winter yesterday, and it's summer now. The whole environment has changed. Everything looks like it was taken from paintings of the Russian landscape in the 19th century. The grass is too lush. Bushes are not like what bushes should be. They're so thick you can't see through them. The treetops, honestly, and the trees themselves, the forest is quite far away. But the trees looked at they've closed their ranks and are now just waiting for the order to advance in the fields and the plains. Oh, some good writing. I caught my breath and looked at the bus, which is now barely visible. It was a good run. Fear took, took over me once again. Those power lines. There must be people here. But what does it mean? In fact, it means nothing at all. Couldn't they have power lines even in hell? Roasting sinners over hot coals? This is so last century. I must have reached the point of no return, after which you could either lose your mind completely or finally try to understand what is going on. And while I still have a choice, I should choose the second option, slowly heading back to the bus. Of course, it was scary. But I'm not likely to find an answer in the fields of the woods. And the wretched bucket of bolts is the only kind of link that I have with the real world. I should scout the area. Sov Noyok meets Owlet. Semyon, a trip's taking a bit longer today, I smirked. A person may start acting inappropriately in extreme situations. Something like that is probably happening right now. This place didn't look abandoned at all. No rust on the gate, no damage on the walls. Who could have a name like that? Judging by the pioneer statues, it could be a kid's summer camp. Moreover, it appears to be open. Moreover, that's, how, that's exactly how people talk to themselves. Moreover, ergo, of course, the simplest explanation, logically ex speaking, explains nothing at all. The strange, gir got the strange girl, the altered bus summer, the pioneer camp, thousands of theories went through my mind. Alien abduction, hallucination, space-time continuum. But there was no way to pick a single one. I could try to make a phone call. Got my cell phone and dialed the first number. No answer, bro. No answer. There might be no signal from this remote place. Though I cannot be the only one who came here. Buses can't drive themselves. I examined the bus. Wasn't a hallucination. Yeah, this is exactly the bus that takes you to places beyond your understanding. If you carelessly fall asleep, I gave a nervous chuckle to myself came out by myself, sporadically, because this wasn't the right place for time to laugh. But where on earth is the driver? I sat down on the curb, K-E-R-B. My patience didn't last long. Anxiety seems to have reached its peak. Aliens and parallel universes were gone from my imagination, leaving only a void of darkness. Is this how everything will end? Is this how my life will end? I wanted to do so much. I had so many plans up to this moment. I was overwhelmed from the idea. It was definitely the end. But why? It's not fair. God, why? It's the first time you're invoking the name of God. You should have asked him earlier for help. Tears were burning my eyes unbearably. I curled up and started rolling in the grass. Why? What did I do? What did you do to me? The cries all were only heard by the speechless statues and pioneers. The tree, the bird on the tree. I was left breathless and weeping, sobbing occasionally. You are a broken, broken man. After a while, I managed to pull myself together, cleared up a bit. All in all, if someone wanted to kill me, what is all this for? It doesn't look like an experiment either. It's just some crazy co coincidence. No threats. Anyway, it seems like there's no danger, and the panic of soon is soon gone. Of course, the blood is still pounding in my temples. My hands are shaking, but at least I can think clearly now. I can see clearly now. Right now, there's nothing that can really change anyway. So no matter how much I think or how mad I get, it would only make things worse. Until some actual facts appear. There we go. Let's look for facts. There's no point in making guesses. In any case, I won't learn anything by lounging about. Yeah, let's go in. Come on, guys. Let's go in the camp. 
A girl came out from behind them, <gasps> wearing a pioneer uniform. She looks like a great ambassador for this janky camp. My logic didn't let me down this time. A pioneer uniform in the 21st century. The girl is here. I froze, unable to take a step. I felt very much like running away, running as far as I could, just like running free as the wind, faster and faster. Running, running, running. Oh, so much writing about running. Run, run again. It's like the seventh dialogue of running. Meanwhile, the girl came closer and smiled. I could not help notice her beauty, even though I was trembling with fear. Human instincts work independent of consciousness. And only while 5% of the... Oh my gosh. I desperately wanted to get less complicated. Stop thinking about formal quotes from the encyclopedia. A pretty Slavic face, long braids, that looked two armfuls of fresh hay. Pioneer girl, hi. You must have just arrived. Uh, should we reply? He talks too much. What if we don't reply? Then she's going to talk too much. Let's reply. Um, yeah. All right, then welcome. She smiled broadly. Strange. He looked at, as if it was just a normal girl in front of me. Bah, I shouldn't have returned here. The woods and fields seem better. But what shall I do next? Try to speak with her if she was human or run away? The blood was pumping in my head. A little bit more, and the poor pioneer girl would be splattered with the gruesome contents of my skull. Oh, please, save us. Save us from the gruesome contents of your skull. What's so funny about that? The girl looked me over. I sent shivers down my spine. No, 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 nothing. Great, then. Great. So what's great about that? Suddenly, a thought crossed my mind. Forget about the bus behind me. The fact that it was winter yesterday and summer today, I wanted to rip off my itchy sweater and just accept the fact that it was all happening. Uh, Semyon, would you happen to know... You should go to our camp leader. She'll tell you everything. Look, you go straight ahead in the square, turn left, you'll see several small cabins. She pointed the gate as if I knew what was behind them. Well, you can ask someone where Olga Dmitrievna's cabin is. Dmitrieva is a patron patronymic. A derivative of a person's father's name. Oh, too much info. I, erm, got it? Of course I didn't. Well, I've got to go now. Thanks for meeting me. And she disappears behind the gates. All this show on the bus, I guess while everything is here, is just the way it's supposed to be. Camp leader, pioneer, forum, uniform. What, are they doing a historical reenactment here? I hope I won't find Lenin standing atop an armored car in this square. But even that would not surprise me now. After standing alone for a while, I headed into the camp. A mere 50 meters ahead, a small one-story house popped on the left side. The sign near the door said, Clubs. I'm assuming this is Clubs. I was about to come closer when... The door suddenly opened. A short girl wearing a pioneer uniform came out. Her pretty face gave me the impression of one suffering in the fate. She's surprised! She's surprised! As soon as she saw the the girl froze, as if frightened. I froze too, concerning it was the best to do. I approached first, or wait until she showed some initiative, or maybe run away after all. Although my last option is constantly being suggested by my self-preservation instinct. Not the worst human instinct, but by far the most logical. Oh my gosh, she's going into describing the deductive reasoning. Suddenly, someone jumped out from the nearby bushes. A girl wearing a bright t-shirt with USSR written on it. I guess that's a U-U-U-U-U-U-U-S-S-R. Such a perfect re reproduction of the age. She looked quite short from the distance. Probably younger than both Pioneer Girls. <laughs> nice music. At last, I decided to come closer, but the USSR jumped towards me towards the first girl and started telling her something while wildly waving her arms. The other girl seemed confused and lowered her gaze, remained silent. I would probably have continued to observe their amazing, amusing dialogue, but USSR suddenly pulled something out of her pocket and started waving it in front of the girl's face. That something turned out to be a grasshopper. Hoo hoo! Eee, the first girl squeezed, screamed. She must not be too keen on insects. She instantly rushed off towards the place where Lennon presumably made his speech about the workers and parent 
Peasant's Revolution. That is to say, towards the square. The USSR glanced at me, grinning playfully, and dashed after her. I have absolutely no clue. I'm just going to click really fast because there's so much. Oh my god, look how much dialogue there is. Guys, this is the first 15, or rather, first 30 minutes of Everlasting Summer. A visual novel game that certainly is getting you into the novel part of it. It has really good graphics. It's really good. Look at this. It's a very good, well-drawn game. However, guys, this is boring as shit. And I am not going to finish this game. That's all I'm going to tell you guys. It's the first 15. Thanks for hanging out with me. If you left, that's okay. Don't matter. I'll, sit, I'll see you guys on the flip side.